let's loop through each row of this Excel sheet with Power Automate Desktop. In this Excel sheet, we have three columns. I have ID, country, and capital. Let me close it. I placed it here on my desktop. And if you want the same data, there's a link to this Excel book in the course description. Here we have Power Automate Desktop. First, we must open the Excel book. To do so, I go up to Actions, and then I find a Launch Excel and drag it in. Here in the Launch Excel, I click this dropdown and choose Open the following document. Now go click in here in Document Path, click the document up here, and find our data.xlsx and click Open. The part is inserted. I can choose to make the instance visible. I rarely want that. That will be the Excel book opens up in my face. Then I scroll a little bit down. I can see the variables produced is called Excel instance. We can refer to this variable later in the flow. That will be to our Excel book because now we open it. Let us do that with a read from Excel worksheet. We drag it in as our second action. Here you can see I refer to the Excel instance variable. I want to read all data from this Excel sheet. So that will be all available values from worksheet. Variables produced, that is Excel data. This will be a data table. We read it into a data table because it's much faster to work with a data table than an Excel book. One important thing is in the advanced, if your data in the Excel sheet got headers, you need to tick this first line of range contains column names. Then we can click Save. When we open up an Excel book, we also need to close it. Otherwise, Power Automate Desktop can and will lock it. So here I'll click Close Excel and say Save. Let's just test that this works. It will do nothing that read, open up the Excel book, read it and close it again. If you have a status ready and a check mark down here, and you can see the Excel data, four rows and three columns over here, I can double click it. Then we are ready to iterate this data table. That will be, we take each row one by one and say we want the country out, that could be India, Canada, Denmark, and Indonesia. Maybe we want to type that into a system. So I click close here. Let's go find a for each, drag in the for each after the read from Excel worksheet. The value to iterate, that will be our data table. So I'll pick the Excel data. What are we going to do here when we iterate? We take one row, one by one in this data table. A data table is just like an Excel sheet with rows and columns. So each item in the collection that we're iterating over is a data row. We refer to these rows as current items. So here I just say save. If I want to access a specific value in each row, that could be our country. Let me show you how easy that is. I just find a display message. I could also choose to populate into systems. It will be the same expression that I write. In message to display, here I will refer to my current item. So I click this X, double click the current item. This one will display the entire data row. So first one, the first row, second row, third row, and fourth row. I want to access the country. I could do that by specifying either the index. Remember, this is zero indexed. So the first column is index zero, one, two. So if I wanted to access the country column, that will be one since that is the second column. A more robust way is if you have column names, we had that, ours was called country, to specify that. Since a column name is a text, I encapsulate them with single quotation mark. So here I say country, like this. I can also choose to keep message box always on top, so it pops up in my face. Let us click save it and Let's go click Run. Now we have accessed each item in this Excel book. I have it on my other one here. I have India, Canada, Denmark, 
Indonesia. And that's how easy it is. If you want to see the complete use case, if you want to learn how to type these values into a system, take data out and write it back to Excel, then you must watch this video.